Before we consider disassembling the pump, there's a couple troubleshooting things that we can check that will save us from having to take apart the pump in the first place. First, make sure that the pump is prime. So when you first start up, this will take about 15 minutes and it will be loud at first. And once it's prime, that is it's gotten all the air out of the system, it should quiet down. So give it at least 15 minutes before moving on to the next steps. Next, make sure that there's plenty of water in the system. So at least the bottom skirt of the pump, it's about an inch and a half high, has to be submerged. So it's about 25% on the water gauge. And that means that the pump isn't going to cavitate and it should stay prime. So if that is good, your pump is primed, you've given it the 15 minutes, it's still loud. Or if it was really quiet and it turns loud, you might have to look at this next option, which is to quiet down the pump, but it does involve taking apart the pump. So this is the video we were given by the manufacturer to disassemble the pump. It looks like they're using a rubber mallet and they hit the skirt. So you can use a rubber mallet if you have it. You could also use something a bit harder, but just be careful that you don't hit the housing of the pump or you could dent it or scuff it. Um, but it does work with a variety of tools. So you're going to knock off that skirt nice and easily. And this is the hardest part of the entire disassembly. There are four clips that hold this cover to the rotor and you have to pry them ideally with a flat headed screwdriver back and forth until they unclip. And there's a bit of a knack to this because even the manufacturer had a little bit of trouble. This is by far the hardest part of the system but it will eventually come off. Once you get the cover off, you're going to see the impeller with the magnet attached and there's also a shaft that runs through on the ends of the shaft. You see rubber stops, those are gonna be here and here. So there's two conditions in which you don't see them and we'll show you where to find them if you don't have the rubber stops. First, if you are missing the one from the top, like you see here, that means that the rubber stop must have got stuck on the front housing that covers it in the little hole where that rubber stop sits. So you can just as easily just push the rod in and it'll pull out that stop, just like you see there. The second alternative is if you have the rubber stop missing off the bottom when you pull out the impeller like this. So there's a spot deep in the bottom, it's kind of hard to see, and that is where the rubber stop is. It's where it's going to sit in place normally. So if you just have the little rod, you can push it into place and that'll grab up that rubber stop and then you have it. Make sure you have both of those before moving ahead. Now there really isn't a right or wrong way to put these on. Just make sure that the shaft is there and the rubber stops are on either side. Now where our problem is coming from the noise in the cases we found is there's movement in between the impeller and the magnet like you see here and it going back and forth is causing that rattling sound. So we have a pretty quick and easy solution. What I've found is that you can take, in this case I'm using crazy glue, you can use super glue, um, something that's gonna have a really strong bond. Make sure to remove the shaft, keeping the nubs close by, and then generously place the crazy glue on the separation point, I guess you would say, between the impeller and the magnet. And what that's going to do is it's going to stop it from being able to move up and down. And it's going to hold it in place nice and tightly and uh, give it plenty of time to dry. So now that it is all dry, what you'll notice is you're not going to be able to move the impeller without the magnet moving alongside with it. That's kind of hard to see from the video, but um, I can't move the impeller without moving the magnet at the same time. And what that's going to do is stop it from vibrating. So once you're at that point, you can place back in the shaft with the rubber stops at the end. Now we just have to simply assemble everything back in place. So we're going to be pushing that rubber nub into that little hole at the bottom. We're going to align the nub on the top with this housing. 
And if everything is aligned, it should snap into place easily. If it's not snapping into place, it's probably because it's not quite aligned right. It'll push pretty much straight down and you'll hear a good click. Then you can take the skirt. There's a circle and that lines up with the circle. So if instead you're just replacing the rotor, it's going to be pretty much the exact same steps, except this time you're just going to be replacing the rotor, not super gluing it with the replacing with the new rotor and reassembling it again. Just make sure that those nubs are all in place and everything aligns properly and you're done. So we've been running this now for two to three weeks with a super glued rotor and we haven't had any issues. It stayed very quiet. Doesn't seem to affect the rate of pumping and it doesn't seem that it would cause any damage to the pump. That doesn't mean that in the future it doesn't cause an issue. So I'd say this is more of a, a temporary solution we haven't seen any issues with doing this. However, um, if, there, if it is unbearably loud, at least it gives you something to try that does quiet it down.